What's up you guys? I'm Geeta Thakur and today we are going to be learning more about class 10 science CBSE. Uh, this is from the chapter life processes and we are actually going to be understanding cellular transport. There are three main ways that cells uh, do the transportation. That means they take their minerals outside, they excrete, they take water inside and those three are osmosis, diffusion and active transport. First one up is diffusion. Let's study about diffusion. So I have this perfume right here and if I spray it, I can actually smell it. Here the, the scent spreads to the entire room and this basically happens because of diffusion. Things have a tendency to move from higher concentration from where they are concentrated and spread out. There are multiple factors that affect diffusion. So there are multiple factors that affect the rate at which something from a high concentration goes to a lower concentration. Something very simple, for example, if I switch on the fan in the room, uh, the perfume is going to spread out faster and it's going to be, uh, the diffusion is actually going to happen at a far higher rate. Another thing that's very important for us to understand about uh, diffusion is surface area. We want to really increase the surface area of something so that diffusion happens faster. For example, I have a chili over here. Now, when I'm making a curry or I uh, cook something, I don't directly put the chili in. You may say that all the essence of the chili, the chili nest is actually inside. So what I can do is I can cut it up into two and use it now. But I still don't use it this way. What we actually do is we cut it down into smaller pieces. I'll show you why. When I make another cut over here, it now has two exposed surfaces that it didn't initially have. As I keep chopping it up more and more, we have more surfaces that get exposed. And this really increases the rate of diffusion. So it's the same amount of chili, but the more surface area that is exposed, the better it mixes, the better it diffuses, and the better your curry tastes. Alright, so the next sort of transportation that happens in cells is osmosis. To demonstrate osmosis, I have over here with me a pack of Orbeez. I'm going to put this in a bowl and then put the water and pour in some water. I'm, sh I'm sure you've seen this, you've tried this at your home and you know what happens to the Orbeez. Uh, osmosis is actually defined as movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane from an area of lower concentration to a higher concentration. Now we are going to break that up in a minute. This is what the Orbeez looks like now. It's soaked in water. This is what we have after 4 hours. As you can see, my Orbeez were this size initially. All right, and all the water has permeated through and they've grown to be this size. So, like I said, let's define osmosis again. Osmosis is the movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane. We can see that water has gone inside from a lower concentration of solute to a higher concentration. Now, let's understand what that means. To do that, I have an analogy. What we are going to do is we are going to think of water as people who permeate through, who go, to another, who go to other places in search of better opportunities. In this case, it's not the solutes that can travel. It's not the thing inside the sodium polyacrylate that can come outside. But it's just selective. Only water can go inside and only water can go outside. We're going to do the same experiment now, but this time uh, with the powder form of Orbeez. This is again sodium polyacrylate, but it's much finer than Orbeez. If I put this into the bowl, and then I put in the same amount of water. You can see that it's instantly getting soaked up. And if I just give this a little stir, you can see that this is now a gel. It, all the water has actually been soaked up and it's not in liquid form anymore, the water. Okay, I want you to imagine this as a country with the sodium polyacrylate being a country with a lot of opportunities and as the people go in, it soaks up all the talent. But what happens? What happens when there is more opportunities? So now I have some sodium salt over here, I have sodium chloride and what I'm going to do is pour this outside, provide other opportunities. So we give, we pour this over here, we put the salt in. And now we actually have a high concentration of sodium ions, not just inside, but even outside. And let's see if this changes the solution. Let's give it two minutes. I'm going to stir this up a bit. And we can see it's already gotten a little more fluid like. The water has come out because the other opportunities of the 
I should say the talent has poured out, the people have come out because there were other opportunities outside as well. We can see that this is getting more liquidish. So that's what osmosis is. Osmosis is the movement of water. We saw how water went inside and then we saw how water came outside. Why did it go inside? Because there were sodium ions inside. They absorbed the water. This was like going inside the cells. When water goes inside, it's going inside a cell. That's endoosmosis. And then when water exits it, because the concentration outside of the solute or of the salt is higher, water exits it. That's exoosmosis. So that is endoosmosis and exoosmosis. So later, it wasn't really in liquid form because it's inside the cell. The cells have a cell wall, they have a cell membrane. So it remains in that structure. And although it feels more jelly-like, but it's inside. We can see that most of the water has now come out. And again, it isn't really jelly-like anymore like we saw. So that is the movement of water, remember? Movement of water, semi-permeable membrane, from a lower concentration to a higher concentration of the solute from a higher concentration of the salt where there are more from where there are less opportunities to where there are more opportunities finally the third type of transport is why cells are living active transport we saw osmosis and diffusion but this happens in non-living things as well uh, the sodium polyacrylate the room the air these are all non-living things but they do have we do observe diffusion we do observe os osmosis in them these are passive forms of transport that means cells don't have to spend energy for them the third type of transport is active transport cells have to actually spend energy to be able to transport materials this way uh, they spend energy by actually spending atp so adenosine triphosphate it has three phosphate molecules this breaks down into adenosine diphosphate phosphate adp and uh, through a complex process of opening the gate, while ATP turns into ADP, the cell is able to actually move ions, move water, move other minerals uh, in and out of its membrane uh, for its consumption. And that's it. So those are the three sorts of transports that we have. The two passive ones are osmosis and diffusion. And the active transport is the third one. Thank you for watching. I hope the video made it simpler to understand what sorts of transport are there. We're really going to use osmosis diffusion and active transport to understand uh, the motion of how whenever cells take in something, they excrete something. Uh, we are going to understand whether it's by osmosis, it's by uh, diffusion or it's by ATP. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Please make sure you like the video and please subscribe.